Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are looking at proportions in this lesson from Simplify Academy. Let's do it. So we will talk about what proportions are. We're going to be doing some cross multiplying, so I hope you remember that from previous lessons. Then we will make sure we talk about setting them up properly and practicing. All of these are key important things in mastering proportions, so let's get started. First off, proportion. Where have you seen a proportion before? Well, maybe I should show you what a proportion looks like. There. Have you ever seen this before? Hmm, think back to way back at the beginning of the year. Maybe you saw this and you called it an equivalent fraction. Maybe you see this and you call it an equivalent ratio. Guess what? That's exactly what they are. A proportion is an equivalent ratio or an equivalent fraction. So this isn't anything new. In fact, it's more practice of an important concept and skill that we are going to use again and again. So let's, again, look forward. This should look familiar. We're going to use cross multiplying to say if this proportion is equivalent. This should seem very familiar. All right, let's do it. 3 times 12 and 18 times 2. 2 times 18 is 36. 3 times 12 is 36. Therefore, they are equivalent. That's it. So if we're asking if things are proportional, it's exactly the same process as trying to calculate if fractions were equivalent or if ratios were equivalent. Here we go. I want you to double check, pause, and practice. Is 3 sixths equal to 8 twelfths? Go. We're using cross multiplying, so we're doing 3 times 12 and 6 times 8. They are not equivalent, so they are not proportional. Or we would say these are not proportions. All right? Now, if we are asked in some questions, to make a proportion, that's a little bit different and a bit of an advanced skill from what we've done in the past. So you will be asked to check, are two proportions or are, are two ratios or fractions equivalent? But you're also going to be asked to make your own proportion when given a set of numbers. So here's an example question. Make a proportion using the following four numbers. So I have the numbers 4, 1, 2, 2. Now I can set up this as my proportion. One to two is equal to two to four. And I can set it up as a fraction and check it using cross multiplying. Four times one is four, two times two is four. I have successfully made one proportion using these numbers. Now the, the trick to this is there's not just one proportion that can be made for every set of four numbers. Okay, so I'm going to show you an example where I actually make a couple of them. So this one asks me to make two proportions from the following four numbers. Let's take a look. Well, I've got the numbers 16, 7, 14, and 8. So I'm going to set it up as 7 to 8 is equal to 14 to 16. I'll check using cross multiplying. Let's see, uh, 7 times 16 and 8 times 14. Um, they're both equal to uh, 112. Because they're both equal to 112, they are proportional. So I have successfully written a proportion. Now, what if I said 8 to 7 equals 4 to 16? Does the order of those numbers matter? Well, if we set this one up as a fraction, 8 over 7 and 14 over 16, we use cross multiplying and we'll find it very much does matter, right? 8 times 16 is 128, 7 times 14 is 98. So this is not a proportion. However, if we try a different one, 7, um, 7 to 14, 8 to 16, we'll find that we have calculated and found another proportion. So that's nice, all right? You might also notice that if you take those fractions and flip both of them upside down, you'd be multiplying the same numbers. So 14 to 7 is equivalent to 16 to 8. Okay, So there's lots of different proportions that can be made out of four numbers. 
on the worksheet, you will be asked to do a couple of questions like this, I think two questions like this, where you'll be asked to actually make your own proportions when given four numbers. What I would recommend you do is look for numbers that are, like you see in this pattern, the seven and eight are smaller, the 14 and 16 are larger. So look what I did with my first proportion over there. I put the two smaller numbers in order, or in, on, in one proportion, or one ratio, in order, smallest to largest. And then I took the two larger numbers and put them in the second ratio, smallest to largest. That will usually work, okay? It was a little tougher with the last one, one that had uh, two of the same numbers. But if you're given numbers where there's obviously two smaller and two larger, that's one way that you can definitely separate them out. But always check using cross multiplying. All right. Now for a quick cool down question, we've gone ahead and done some challenging make your own proportion questions. Here's just an are they equivalent question. Pause this, practice it. Let me know what you get. You can't really let me know what you get. I can guess that you got it right. Did you do 10 times nine and six times 15? Get 90 on both sides. They are definitely equivalent. Couple things to remember, Portion, proportions are equivalent ratios. They're the same as equivalent fractions. You've done this before. Cross multiplying will find if they are proportional every single time. And just as a reminder, cause I'm one of those people who likes to rub it in when I was right, I told you cross multiplying would be used in your future. I hope that video was fun for you. Good luck with your cross multiply. Make sure to check out that worksheet. Finish all the questions before you go on to the quiz. Have a wonderful day.